Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a DIY Dollar Tree Buffalo checked doormat that is very popular now with the layered doormats. Um, there I have it for Halloween. We're going to use two of the gray Dollar Tree doormats. These are in like the hardware homeware section. Um, then we're going to use some white apple barrel paint. If you um, want to also use some black apple barrel paint you don't have to be apple barrel it actually if you have house paint that might be good we're going to use some of uh, duct tape um, as well carpet tape would be better but they don't sell carpet tape at the dollar tree and i just wanted to show you really quick that there is sort of a these will meet up properly the way that they're cut so just p p be mindful one has a stripe right at the very, very edge and it butts up to one that doesn't have a stripe at the very edge. So I just wanted to make sure that I tell you that before we continue on. All right, and then I flip them over, making sure I keep them together um, the best I can. And I'm using my table as like a, a square, um, basically making sure I line up a rug to the right and I line up the lugs, both rugs to the bottom. And then if you don't have anybody to help you, just grab a couple of little pieces of tape to hold the sides together while you tape down the seam. I chose to do three pieces of tape and then I went back after I was done painting it and I followed across with two pieces of tape across. But I knew that um, there was a chance that the paint would, the, the, the wetness would come through the rug. So I wanted to um, leave that to the very end. So now what I'm doing is I'm squaring off the bottom. So both of these rugs have curved edges and um, when you meet them together, it does leave like a little W, you know, butt crack I don't know what to talk cleavage I don't know <laughs> at the at the bottom when you meet them so I'm taking uh the straight edge I'm marking the straight edge I actually um took the ruler um to mark the you know basically level from the bottom and then I took the piece of tape just to help me mark it straight across and this uh box cutter is the one from the Dollar Tree it is the best utility knife I'm telling you um, I did snap a new blade for this project, but it went through these rugs like butter. Now, you can do the top as well. It is entirely, entirely up to you. I wanted to make this rug for me for the layered look that's very popular right now, where you put your doormat on, on top of another bigger doormat um, and the buffalo check or stripe or different textures, whatever you like, um, is what they're putting down on the, on the bottom layer. And I knew I was going to do that, so I didn't have to worry about the top portion because my top rug was going to cover it. Um, but you go ahead and do that if you want. You can also do this much bigger if your door allows, um, but I didn't. So we're going to use the same square sponge that we made um, for the autumn video. I want to link that instructions in the description box, that video in the description box down below. But the um, Buffalo Check farmhouse sign that we made that says thankful, we took three um, of the Jenga blocks, glued them together, and then took a foam brush, cut it apart, and made a, a basically a stamp. So each one of these squares is going to be four stamps. Um, that's the size that I wanted. So um, I wanted to tell you guys that you could do the masking tape technique where you could mask off the stripes, um, two widths of masking tape, um, and then you can fill in your squares. You can do that if you want to. Just keep in mind that you know that the gray of the rug is what is going to be the gray of, of where the black crosses the white, okay? So we only have to paint on the white squares and the black squares, all right? Now, so I messed up on the last thing I did, but I'm telling you now that this is how you're doing it. But we're going to do, um, you can do a whole row of white, um, and then basically... Um, you're going to skip a row and then you're going to continue with white. The reason I did this is I wouldn't have to keep washing the square. Um, so what I ended up doing was I took a piece of paper that was the size. I basically stamped the first one in the middle. Um, I showed my little finger there to show you that I was in the middle of the two rugs. Um, and then I took a piece of paper uh, like cardstock. It actually is a piece of photo paper. And I made it approximately the same size as the stamped area so that I can use it as a negative space cover so to I made a square I put the thing down I went on the other side of the square and I made my next square I'm sorry I'm having trouble talking today <laughs> and when it came to the very edge um, there was just one stamp width on the very edge 
Now I decided to round the corners so that even with my rug down in the center, it would look rounded at the top and the bottom. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. That's totally optional. Um, again, and you can cut off the top and leave it square, which is a little bit more of these rugs that you find are a little bit more on the square side, but I didn't care. I liked it round. I wanted to show you I could cut it with a scissor as well. So once you have all of the white squares um, stamped, then we're going to do um, black. Um, but what I wanted to tell you was I'm just using Apple Barrel acrylic paint. My front door is under a porch. Not just a little overhang, but like an actual porch. So it doesn't see much weather. And because this rug is not where you wipe your feet, because it's underneath the rug that you wipe your feet, I'm not going to really be mindful of the fact that I, it's not going to take a lot of wear and tear. So I'm just going to, it's just going to be there and it's going to lay there. If you're planning on using this just as a rug, um, then you might want to go with an outdoor latex paint like house paint and they do sell them at Walmart and they do sell it at all of your hardware stores will sell paint um, and you can get some mixed in black you can get it mixed in gray you can get it mixed in white I mean not mixed in white but usually they have white available that's what I would do if this was what I was doing with it you can also use 97 cent spray paint from Walmart but you'll have to do some masking for that for sure okay so now I'm just going in with the same um, with the black paint. Now, another thing to note is that um, I needed extra, more white paint than black paint because the white paint, of, obviously, you have to put on a little thicker to get a little bit better coverage. The black paint um, just looks up, you know, looks good just with one coat. Um, now, you can also, um, what I was going to say was, if this gray is too dark for you, if you think that it's not enough contrast, um, I was telling Jimmy, um, I made him watch the video because it is so much more contrasted in real life um, than it is on camera. And I know that there's some shots where you can see that there's more light on the left side of the screen that does show more contrast. But um, in real life, it really, to the eye, it really does look like a, like Buffalo Check. Um, you can kind of see there on the left that it does have that differenti you know, differentiates that color a little bit better. And that's basically what we're just going to continue the rest of the way is we're going to um, mix, um, not mix, but you're going to paint the black squares in where the white squares are. Um, okay. And it really is just that simple. So I wanted to tell you a couple of things, right? I told you that you can cut squares if you want to. You don't have to round off the corners. Um, once this was all dry, I went ahead and I taped the back. Um, I'm going to show you at the end the sample, not the sample, but the inspiration pieces. And these are anywhere, like the cheapest I've seen one is $8.99. So obviously I made this for $2. And even if you bought brand new bottles of paint, like a, like the 50 cent bottles of paint each, $3. And even if you had to buy a brand new duct tape, $4. But um, still nowhere near the price for the other ones. Okay. And even if you had to make the sponge, <laughs> we're still only up to $6. <laughs> um, so that's why I thought I would share this guy with you. And I was just really wanted one for myself and there were more money than I can afford at the time. So, um, so that's it. Here it is for, oh, sorry, that's a little squishy. So here it is. And you can see the contrast much better up close, Right want to put a little light on the situation and that's it it is so easy I've just pulled some different inspirations of different plaids that you could use or different techniques or looks this is how it looks with a uh, they, the look is really with a core mat um, a, a light color but of course it's Halloween I should have taken out my regular mat <laughs> but I wanted to show you that when you look online they show you different examples um, you can get, um, like I said, plaids or checks, whatever kind of pattern that you like underneath it. Um, here is one that's a really, really light buffalo check, almost like reverse buffalo check it looks like, right, with the white underneath it. And here it is with, with just a really pretty hello rug underneath it as well. So 
that's it everybody i hope you really enjoyed this tutorial if you do give it a thumbs up if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share with friends and family anybody you know might be interested in making this for their home or for a gift and even or even just simulating the style and if you haven't yet uh, click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell youtube will let you know whenever i upload a new video and as always you take care god bless and we'll see you next time bye